whistleblower dies on the streets of Surrey. In the absence of a natural cause of death, then it's inherently suspicious. Threats of violence in London. We start to receive a very strange text messages and voice threats that they're going to get us and then they're going to kill us. A dead man goes on trial in a Russian courtroom. Now, because those who killed him simply can't stop, um, there's now this, this charade of a trial going on. And all linked to a London businessman whose personal war with the Russian state is causing diplomatic uproar. I was so upset and so angry that I said to myself, for Sergei, for his memory and for his family, I'm going to make sure that we get justice. Tonight on Panorama, the Russian crime war that has reached the UK. I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. St. George's Hill, Surrey. They call it the UK's Beverly Hills. John Lennon and Didier Drogba have lived here. Security couldn't be tighter. It's an unusual place for a murder, but that's exactly what some people think happened here. Walked to the gate and I could see the body in the road. We rolled him over. Um, and started CPR straight away. Was there any sign of him recovering at all, no? No, no sign at all, no. The man lying in the road was a 44-year-old Ukrainian businessman called Alexander Perepolichny. None of the people that came out and were on the scene knew who he was or had seen him before. What do local people think? Um, everybody locally, their first word was he was murdered. More than five months later, that's what many people are still thinking. That's because of Alexander Perpolichny's association with this man. He's a multimillionaire and UK citizen. But he's a wanted man in President Putin's Russia an enemy of the Russian state. It's a, essentially a criminal state now. It's a sovereign state run by a group of criminals. There's no reason why 141 million Russians should tolerate the 1,000 Russians who are stealing all the money from the country. Bill Browder runs a company called Hermitage Capital. He used to manage multi-billion dollar investments in Russia. But for the past six years, Browder has been fighting a dangerous war with the Russian state from right here in London. It's a war that's tapped into fears about Russian criminality in the UK. Alexander Litvinenko, himself a former KGB agent and a vocal critic of President Putin, was poisoned with radioactive material. A wealthy Russian banker is in a coma in hospital under armed guard after being shot several times on the street near his home. The exiled Russian businessman Boris Berezovsky has been found dead at his home in Berkshire. He was 67. For Browder, it's a personal crusade, and it's causing a diplomatic storm. It's a war which has already drawn in President Obama and could make things very uncomfortable for the UK government. And this is where it started, Moscow. It used to be home to Bill Browder's firm, Hermitage Capital, until the company got on the wrong side of the Russian state. In 2007, the Russian Interior Ministry raided the offices of Hermitage and its lawyers. I heard some commotion at reception, and I went to reception, and there were, there were 20 plainclothes officers from the Minister of Interior uh, with a search warrant. And then it, it, it just went really off the rails from there. 
The Russian Interior Ministry said they were investigating allegations of tax evasion. The police seized computers, documents and company seals. After the raids, Hermitage asked a legal advisor called Sergei Magnitsky to investigate. Alarming details began to emerge. Three Hermitage companies now had different owners. It appeared that the companies had been stolen. We said, well, how is it possible that our companies could have been re-registered? What does one need for um, re-registration of the companies? And he said, the stamps, seals, and certificates of, uh, of registration, which were exactly the documents that were seized by the police. He said, well, it gets worse. The documents that were seized by the police were also used to forge and fabricate a billion dollars of, of backdated contracts to claim that our companies owed a billion dollars to three empty shell companies. Three of its companies apparently stolen and saddled with a billion dollars of fake debts, all within months of the police raid on its offices. For Hermitage, it was clear. The police from the Russian Interior Ministry must have been involved. Hermitage had already begun to get ready for a fight. One of our lawyers went to the police officers involved in the raid and he said, we're on to you. We know that the companies were stolen. We know that these fake liabilities have been created. You're busted. What happened next is disputed. Browder says he was contacted by this man, Igor Sigurian. He's a Russian banker and owns a chain of restaurants in London. He's also reported to have close links with Russia's security services. Here he is in a Russian TV program about London. Browder says Sigurian made him an unusual offer to shut down the three companies that had apparently been stolen from Hermitage. I thought, how does he know about this stuff? All of a sudden, this guy shows up out of the blue. I don't know how he knew what was going on, but I thought it was extremely suspicious. Did you accept his offer of help? No, we, we rejected it outright. I, I thought it was weird, offensive, and, and um, you know, something I, I wanted to have nothing to do with. But was Browder being too suspicious? Sigurian told us he didn't know about the stolen companies until Hermitage asked him for help. There was nothing suspicious. The police had also raided his company. He was simply offering to help Hermitage and him find a legal way of addressing their problems. Two weeks after Browder rejected Sigurian's offer of help, a crime took place that continues to reverberate around the world. The new owners of the three Hermitage companies submitted fraudulent claims for enormous tax refunds. That very same day, the Russian tax authorities approved the refunds. $220 million was paid out. It remains one of the biggest tax frauds in Russian history. After details of the fraud emerged, Browder informed the UK's ambassador in Russia. It's quite a startling story. Over $200 million stolen from the Russian state by basically people working in the Russian Interior Ministry, um, which is obviously appalling. Browder's legal advisor, Sergei Magnitsky, had begun to allege possible connections between the police raids on Hermitage and the tax fraud. Within months, he was arrested. According to the Russians, Hermitage and Magnitsky had been involved in dodging millions in Russian tax. While in prison, Magnitsky wrote countless letters complaining about his conditions. They reveal a shocking picture of mistreatment. Sewage started to rise from the drain under the sink. Several times I have seen rats running along the corridor. The pain became so acute that I was not even able to lie down. 
Сережа на отдыхе. Где-то он отдыхал. Magnitsky developed pancreatitis in prison, but his mother says he was repeatedly denied medical treatment. He was told, you are not in a health resort and we are not obliged to treat you. He didn't get to see a doctor for a month. After 358 days in pre-trial confinement, Magnitsky was finally transferred to a prison medical facility. But within hours of arriving there, he was dead. I went to Matroski Atishina prison and I asked them whether my son was there. And they told me that they had brought him there the night before and that he had died. So we weren't informed of his death. The Russian authorities said he had died of heart failure, but the Kremlin's own Human Rights Council reached another conclusion. He was not provided with medical care. His right to life was violated. When he was transferred to Matroska Tishina Prison Hospital, he was not given any medical care, and as a result, he died. Was Sergei Magnitsky killed? I think that Sergei Magnitsky was killed. Sergei Magnitsky exposed fraud, massive fraud, corrupt fraud in Russia, in which top representatives of the Russian authorities are involved. That is why the authorities are not interested. They do not want to disclose the details of Sergei Magnitsky's death. The Russians deny that Magnitsky was killed. They've also cleared state officials of involvement in the tax fraud and have instead accused Magnitsky himself of being involved. It's a belief that few outside Russia seem to share. Magnitsky was working for a British company. He exposed the fraud on behalf of Hermitage Capital. He was, in effect, killed for doing a proper lawyer's job. Um, all of that, of course, is indefensible. Since Magnitsky's death, Bill Browder has been on a ceaseless campaign against the Russian state. The morning that, that Sergei died, um, after I recovered from the initial shock, I was so upset and so angry that I said to myself, for Sergei, for his memory and for his family, I'm going to make sure that we get justice for him. And that was my vow to him, and I've carried on ever since. Browder has been true to his word. He's in Berlin to lobby the German government about the Magnitsky case. We're just heading now to the Chancellery, uh, Angela Merkel's uh, building, to meet with her senior advisor on Russia. What are they saying currently? They're saying the same thing as every other country says at the beginning of any of these conversations, which is we have to do business with Russia, we have to engage with Russia, we don't want to do anything that's going to upset Russia. I'm saying you can have perfectly good relations with Russia, just don't let their torturers and murderers um, come into Germany. Browder is convinced Sergei Magnitsky was silenced and wants the Europeans to pass legal sanctions against the people he believes were involved. It might seem like a tall order for a private citizen, but Browder has already persuaded the US government to do precisely that. Today we open a new chapter in the US leadership for human rights with the Sergei Maninsky Rule of Law Accountability Act. Last December, President Obama signed the Magnitsky Act, which has seen Russian officials associated with the Magnitsky case named and barred from entering the US. For Browder, it's a provocative and dangerous strategy, and it's brought the threat of violence to his staff in the UK. When we start to expose what Sergei Magnitsky discovered, we start to receive a very strange text messages and voice threats that they're gonna get us and then they're gonna kill us. You got those here in London? Yes. 
This is the message, voice message that has been received by uh, one of my colleagues on our corporate phone okay. from Russia. Is, that is pretty awful. That is really nasty. It's the tone of it, everything about it is deeply, deeply sinister. It is. So why was that sent to you? To it's, intimidate you? Absolutely. It's, the message is clear that if you don't stop what you're doing, exposing our crimes and start looking for money, you're going to be dead. But Browder has refused to back down. He's been publicly naming Russian officials linked to the Magnitsky case. Organized criminals stole 230 million... He's even made internet videos such as this one. It was the biggest tax fraud in Russia's history and resulted in the death of Sergei Magnitsky. Weeks after this video appeared online, Hermitage lawyers were contacted by a man claiming to have inside information about the fraud. His name, Alexander Perpolichny. Perpolichny handed over confidential bank documents. They showed money transfers into Swiss bank accounts linked to some of the Russian officials who had helped approve the fraudulent tax refund. Hermitage's war with Moscow was about to escalate. We took those documents, gathered them together, put together a very detailed articulate uh, criminal complaint. And so in January of 2011, we filed the uh, criminal complaint with the Swiss police and the Swiss prosecutors. The Swiss took the information seriously. They froze bank accounts and even had meetings with Perpolichny. We asked banks to hand out documentation around these blocked accounts. And they also did several interviews from Swiss institutions and also from uh, foreigners like, for example, Mr. Peripilicny. What is the current state of play? Are those bank accounts still frozen? Is the investigation continuing? The investigation is continuing in a final stage. The bank accounts are still frozen. Millions frozen in Swiss bank accounts. Browder had landed his biggest blow yet against his enemies in Moscow. 19 months later, Per Polichny was found dead in Surrey. More than five months since Alexander Per Polichny's death, and after two post-mortems, the police say they still don't know how he died. It's left some people wondering if he was murdered. I'm on my way to meet one. Valery Morosov was a major contractor with the Russian government. That was until he exposed corruption. He's been living in the UK for more than a year because he says Russia is too dangerous for him. He now helps other whistleblowers who were under threat. There is a hit list, I was told, which was uh, uh, found by the Russian Home Ministry, by the Russian police. And in this list, uh, there are uh, from eight to ten uh, Russian citizens living in London. Peripilichny was in this list. They're under threat from who exactly? From, from criminals. criminals. Where is that information coming from? From the present police officers, which are working for the police and uh, uh, with whom uh, who are my friends, and sometimes they give information, and uh, also uh, the former police officers. That information is in your opinion, totally reliable? Of course reliable. We understand that Per Polichny had many enemies in Russia and that he had lost around $100 million of investors' cash. So it's difficult to say if this hit list had anything to do with his role as a whistleblower. But we've been told Per Polichny had received threats because of his dealings with Hermitage. He had fallen out with a bunch of extremely dangerous characters. He had come to the UK and given us 
highly um, compromising information about those characters that we then took to the Swiss police and froze their money. And God knows what other types of information he had and what other threats he might have been making to expose. One MP is particularly worried about the questions surrounding Per Polichny's death. In the absence of a natural cause of death, then it's inherently suspicious. He gives evidence in money laundering proceedings in Switzerland linked to the biggest tax fraud in Russian history. A uh, matter of months later, he's found dead. Do you think he could have been murdered? Yes, I think it's a distinct possibility. What would be the implications if it turned out that Alexander Perpolichny had in fact been murdered? I think there would be diplomatic uproar and I think it would be uh, probably the biggest diplomatic incident with Russia since Litvinenko, no doubt about that. We don't yet know whether Per Polichny was killed or not. Police are still waiting for the results of toxicology tests. But it's not just the possibility of violence that Per Polichny and his death have highlighted. They suggest possible links between the UK and the massive tax fraud in Russia highlighted by Hermitage. The documents that Alexander Perpolichny gave to Hermitage didn't just point the finger at Russian officials. They also suggested that UK companies may have been involved in the $220 million tax fraud. Perpolichny wasn't alone in raising suspicions about UK companies. While in Moscow, I went to meet a Russian journalist who claims he has documents showing where millions of dollars of the fraud money went. Roman, great. Thanks very much. So you've got some stuff here you can show me? Of course. Laptop with lots of documents. You had two sets of documents and they showed you what? We saw that from Russia, money went to, uh, to other nations, and then they wired that money uh, to other nations again. We saw that uh, some money, uh, well, actually, there were big amounts of money, uh, which arrived uh, on uh, two UK companies from uh, companies from Moldova. Are you surprised by the way that so many UK companies are linked to this? Well, yes, I am surprised because UK, you know, is, is not Russia is, or not Moldova. And uh, for me, it is a surprise that there are so many companies from UK involved in this case and in, in, the, in other cases. All of the UK companies that we looked at in these documents had bank accounts in Eastern Europe. They've also all been dissolved. But what's striking is that the millions of dollars that they were receiving, according to the documents, don't show up in their accounts. We took our evidence to one of Britain's leading experts on money laundering. What do the transactions in our documents show? They indicate that somebody has used UK corporate entities to launder the proceeds of crime in Eastern Europe. You're certain of that? Uh, I, uh, unless somebody offers me an explanation as to why money has flowed into these companies' bank accounts in Eastern Europe that does not relate to the Russian tax fraud, the answer is yes, of course I am, because there, there, isn't, there is no other explanation that I can see. <laughs> The Hermitage case has highlighted fears about Russian crime in the UK. Some are calling for a new law to make it harder for corrupt foreign officials and human rights abusers to come here. Last March, I led a campaign backed by five former foreign ministers with overwhelming unanimous support from the House of Commons on all sides, calling on the government to introduce a UK bill which is the equivalent to a Magnitsky Act and that means mandatory visa bans for people with blood in their hands or links to organised crime uh, but also freezing their assets in this country. We don't want Britain to become a playground for these gangsters, let alone uh, a, a battleground for the violence that tends to follow. The UK government has so far resisted calls for a Magnitsky Act. 
that says it already has the power to keep human rights abusers out of the UK. Bill Browder's not impressed. We have one thing in this country that the Russians covet, which is being able to come here, be safe here, educate their children here, and they value it tremendously. This is, our, this is the only leverage this country really has with Russia, and to ignore it and not use it is weak. As for the dead man at the centre of this case, the UK government says it is seriously concerned and has asked Russia to investigate his death properly. But Russia has already closed its investigation and nobody was found responsible. President Putin insists the West has this case all wrong. Господин Магнитский, как известно, не был каким-то правозащитником, он не боролся там за права человека. Он был юристом господина Браудера, который подозревается нашими правоохранительными органами в совершении преступлений экономического характера на территории Российской Федерации. Putin's Russia now has Bill Browder on trial in Moscow for alleged tax evasion. The courtroom cage is empty because Browder refuses to attend and because the other defendant is dead. Sergei Magnitsky, the man who died in a Russian jail, is on trial for tax evasion. Scandalous. It's truly appalling that this man murdered in the Russian prison system now because those who killed him simply can't stop. Um, there's now this, this charade of a trial going on. It's been condemned around the world as a show trial. Under normal criminal um, trials in Russia, there's a 99.5% conviction rate. This is a politically motivated trial, so there's a 100% conviction rate. So I will be convicted, and Sergei Magnitsky will be convicted. We wanted to speak to the Russian authorities about the Magnitsky case. We approached the Russian Prime Minister and the Russian Interior Ministry. We also approached the Russian ambassador in London. Nobody wanted to be interviewed. The man who used to be the UK's top diplomat in Moscow says it's time to get tough with Russia. We are the Western country with the strongest link to him. And I therefore like to think that we should be in the forefront of dealing with what happened to him. So there should be a Magnitsky Act similar as to what's come into effect in the US? Yes, it seems to me that Europe can do no less than the US has done. The diplomatic stakes are high. When the US introduced its Magnitsky Act, Russia was furious and banned Americans from adopting Russian children. The UK government has tried a softer approach. Critics say it's simply unwilling to upset Putin's Russia, no matter what happens on the streets of Britain. The police need your help. Next on BBC One, Kirsty Young and the team are here with Crime Watch. We're on BBC Three now, a trip to the sexual health clinic, tackling the issues faced by young people in Manchester. A whistleblower dies on the streets of Surrey. In the absence of a natural cause of death, then it's inherently suspicious. Threats of violence in London. We start to receive a very strange text messages and voice threats that they're going to get us, and then they're going to kill us. A dead man goes on trial in a Russian courtroom. Now, because those who killed him simply can't stop, um, there's now this, this charade of a trial going on. And all linked to a London businessman whose personal war with the Russian state is causing diplomatic uproar. I was so upset and so angry that I said to myself, for Sergei, for his memory and for his family, I'm going to make sure that we get justice. Tonight on Panorama, the Russian crime war that has reached the UK. I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you.
St. George's Hill, Surrey. They call it the UK's Beverly Hills. John Lennon and Didier Drogba have lived here. Security couldn't be tighter. It's an unusual place for a murder. But that's exactly what some people think happened here. Walked to the gate and I could see the body in the road. We rolled him over um, and started CPR straight away. Was there any sign of him recovering at all? No. No, no sign at all, no. The man lying in the road was a 44-year-old Ukrainian businessman called Alexander Perepolichny. None of the people that came out and were on the scene knew who he was or had seen him before. What do local people think? Um, everybody locally, their first word was he was murdered. More than five months later, that's what many people are still thinking. That's because of Alexander Perepolichny's association with this man. He's a multi-millionaire and UK citizen, but he's a wanted man in President Putin's Russia, an enemy of the Russian state. It's a, essentially a criminal state now. It's a sovereign state run by a group of criminals. There's no reason why 141 million Russians should tolerate the 1,000 Russians who are stealing all the money from the country. Bill Browder runs a company called Hermitage Capital. He used to manage multi-billion dollar investments in Russia. But for the past six years, Browder has been fighting a dangerous war with the Russian state from right here in London. It's a war that's tapped into fears about Russian criminality in the UK. Alexander Litvinenko, himself a former KGB agent and a vocal critic of President Putin, was poisoned with radioactive material. A wealthy Russian banker is in a coma in hospital under armed guard after being shot several times on the street near his home. The exiled Russian businessman Boris Berezovsky has been found dead at his home in Berkshire. He was 67. For Browder, it's a personal crusade and it's causing a diplomatic storm. It's a war which has already drawn in President Obama and could make things very uncomfortable for the UK government. And this is where it started, Moscow. It used to be home to Bill Browder's firm, Hermitage Capital, until the company got on the wrong side of the Russian state. In 2007, the Russian Interior Ministry raided the offices of Hermitage and its lawyers. I heard some commotion at reception, and I went to reception, and there were, there were 20 plainclothes officers from the Minister of Interior uh, with a search warrant. And then it, it, it just went really off the rails from there. The Russian Interior Ministry said they were investigating allegations of tax evasion. The police seized computers, documents and company seals. After the raids, Hermitage asked a legal advisor called Sergei Magnitsky to investigate. Alarming details began to emerge. three Hermitage companies now had different owners. It appeared that the companies had been stolen. We said, well, how is it possible that our companies could have been re-registered? What does one need for um, re-registration of the companies? And he said, the stamps, seals, and certificates of, uh, of registration, which were exactly the documents that were seized by the police. He said, well, <laughs> it gets worse. The documents that were seized by the police were also used to forge and fabricate a billion dollars of, of backdated contracts to claim that our companies owed a billion dollars to three empty shell companies. Three of its companies apparently stolen and saddled with a billion dollars of fake debts, all within months of the police raid on its offices. For Hermitage, it was clear. The police from the Russian Interior Ministry must have been involved. 
Hermitage had already begun to get ready for a fight. One of our lawyers went to the police officers involved in the raid, and he said, we're on to you. We know that the companies were stolen. We know that these fake liabilities have been created. You're busted. What happened next is disputed. Browder says he was contacted by this man, Igor Sigurian. He's a Russian banker and owns a chain of restaurants in London. He's also reported to have close links with Russia's security services. Here he is in a Russian TV program about London. Chelsea, we're 1-0 today. Yes, of course, our team. Yes, our team. Everything is ours. Slowly, everything will be ours. 